So if you've ever set up your own server, chances are you've heard of Proxmox. It's this incredibly powerful open source virtualization platform. But you know, for pretty much every user from the home tinkerer to the IT pro, one big question always, always comes up. Is a Proxmox subscription actually worth the money? Ah, yes. The infamous nag screen. You know the feeling. You've just finished your install, you're excited, you log into that slick web interface for the first time, and bam, there it is. A polite, but let's be honest, pretty persistent reminder that you don't have a subscription. It's practically a rite of passage for every Proxmox user out there. And that little pop-up, that's really where our whole conversation begins. Is it just a harmless nudge trying to get you to pay up, something you can just click away and forget about? Or does it actually point to something, you know, deeper about the software you're running? Let's unpack that. Okay, so to figure out if it's worth it, we first have to understand what a subscription gets you. What are you actually paying for when you decide to hand over your money to the Proxmox team? Let's break it down. The benefits are really a mix of concrete things and, well, good feelings. On one hand, you get tangible perks, like access to a more stable software repository and actual technical support from the pros. And on the other hand, you get the simple satisfaction of getting rid of that pop-up and of course, that feeling that you're supporting the people who make this awesome software. And this right here is probably the most crucial point, and it's a big one. Proxmox does not lock its core features behind a paywall. I mean it. Whether you pay or not, you get the whole shebang, virtualization, clustering, backups, all of it. The subscription is all about adding a layer of stability and support, not unlocking features you don't already have. All right, let's put on our business hats for a second. If you're running mission-critical services on Proxmox, your priorities are completely different from a home user, right? For you, it's all about risk and reliability. So here's the key difference. Think of the paid enterprise repository like an official stable software release. Updates are slower, sure, but they have been tested like crazy. The free no subscription repo, that's kind of like a beta channel. You get all the new shiny stuff first, but you're also accepting a slightly higher risk of running into bugs. This comment from a community member just sums it up perfectly. By using the free version, you are in a very real way part of the final testing phase. Your experience helps harden the updates before they get rolled out to the paying enterprise customers. It's a clever model for sure, and it highlights exactly why a business would be happy to pay. So for a business, the conclusion is pretty simple. The subscription isn't a luxury, it's just a standard, predictable IT cost. It's insurance. You're paying for peace of mind knowing your systems are running on the most stable code possible, and that you can actually call someone if things go sideways. It's just another line item in the budget. But now let's pivot to the complete other side of the Proxmox world, the home lab. This is the world of enthusiasts, learners, and tinkerers, the very people who helped make Proxmox so popular in the first place. And for them, well, the math looks very, very different. This quote right here gets straight to the heart of the problem for the community. There's a real desire to support the project, but the price feels totally disconnected from non-commercial use. It's not about being cheap, it's that the price feels like it was designed for a completely different customer. Let's just look at the number itself. The base community subscription starts at around 115 euros. But here's the kicker. That's per physical CPU socket per year. And that per socket detail is where things get really tricky for hobbyists. I mean, think about how quickly this adds up. That old dual socket server you got off eBay for next to nothing, that's suddenly 230 euros a year. You want to build a proper three-node cluster to learn about high availability? You're now looking at nearly 700 euros. For a hobby, that cost becomes prohibitive and fast. So, faced with this mismatch, the community isn't just complaining. Not at all. They're actually proposing constructive, alternative ways to support the project they love. Ways that might better align with their reality. And the suggestions are honestly fantastic. People are asking for things like a low-cost home lab license, say 25 bucks a year, or maybe a one-time fee just to make that nag screen go away for good. Others suggest selling merch like t-shirts. The point is, they want to give Proxmox their money, just not in a way that feels like they're signing a massive enterprise service contract. This really isn't about people wanting a free ride. The goodwill towards Proxmox is enormous. The community gets the value of the software and they want to contribute. The friction is purely with the pricing model, which just feels kind of tone deaf to the non-commercial users who helped build its reputation. Which brings us all the way back to our original question. We've looked at what you get, 
who it's for, and who it kind of isn't for. So, what's the final verdict? Is a Proxmox subscription actually worth it? Well, the honest answer is a big, fat, it depends. For a business user, the number one need is stability, and the cost is a totally justifiable expense for support and that peace of mind. But for a home lab user, the primary need is functionality, which is already free, and the cost just feels way too high for the perks you get in return. Ultimately, it all boils down to this. The subscription offers real, tangible value, but that value is almost exclusively tailored to the business world. For the enterprise, it's a clear yes. For the home lab, it's a much more complicated and usually a pretty clear no. And, you know, that leaves us with a much bigger question. The whole Proxmox dilemma is a perfect snapshot of a challenge facing the entire tech industry. We all rely on these powerful open source tools, but finding a funding model that fairly serves both the commercial giants and the passionate individuals who build the community, well, that's the puzzle we're all still trying to solve.